Hello everyone, in this tutorial we will create a planet in Unreal Engine just like this and then animate a transition from the planet's surface into space. And what's really cool about this is if I go into my project, we can see that this is all one camera. So there are no camera cuts. So little guy waving, we zoom out and we see our planet. So we're gonna first start off with creating the planet using Unreal's new sky and atmosphere system. And then we're gonna create the planet surface with the little guy waving. And finally, we'll create the animated transition using Unreal Engine's sequencer. So even if you don't plan on creating planet surfaces or planets, I still highly suggest you watch this tutorial since we're gonna go over a lot of general useful skills within Unreal Engine. So with all that being said, let's jump into it. To start off, I have opened a completely blank Unreal project. I call it Planet Animation, but I've already gone ahead and brought in some assets you can download right now, link in the description, that will help us along in the process. So these are pretty simple assets and you need to have them downloaded if you wanna follow along, or you can always create and use your own. I wanna create a planet, and for the planet, I could just use the basic default sphere. And while this is fine, if we're viewing our planet from a really high angle, so if we're not gonna be on the surface, if we're actually on the surface, we have an issue, and that is because our sphere, the default sphere, is really low poly. So here I have opened an example of a planet, and right now it looks great, but if I actually zoom in and go onto the surface, we can see that we're getting a weird black line, and that's because there's not enough geometry to actually follow the horizon. So we get a black line in between the surface and the sky, which is not what we want. Now, I could open up Blender and create a high poly sphere in there and then import that into Unreal, but that would just take up a lot of time, and let's try to keep our workflow just with Unreal. So, I could use Unreal's new modeling tools. And to activate the modeling tools, you want to go into Settings, Plugins, then click on Built-in, and then just search for it, Modeling. And here we have it, and I'm going to hit Enabled. And keep in mind, this isn't beta, so things are bound to change. Hit Yes, and Restart Now. Now that the engine has been restarted, if I go into modes, we have a new mode called modeling, and this will eventually replace the brush editing mode. So if I go to modeling, I can create a new mesh by going to primitives, and let's make this a spear type two and give it slices of 256, which will really bring up the geometry. And then for pivot location, let's change base to centered because I wanna be able to rotate my spear on its center, not on the top, not on the bottom. And now just anywhere in here, I could just left click and that will create a new spear. So now if I oh, bring this up and if I go into wireframe mode, we can see that this has a lot more geometry, which is great because now I know it will actually follow the horizon and we won't get that black line. Also, it generated a new static mesh within a folder called underscore generated. And there we can see the spear we just made. Yep, that just happened. We can now 3D model within Unreal Engine itself, which is crazy. So we don't have to go through other programs to create static meshes. Not only can we model, but we can also sculpt on static meshes within Unreal, which is insane. So I'm looking forward to see how the modeling tools will improve in Unreal Engine 5. Okay, let's create a new map now. So I'm going to right click, go to level, and I'm going to name this space. Double click to go inside of it and don't save this map because it's just a default map. There's nothing there to save. And I just want to point out that the original inspiration for this tutorial is a really good talk by Horensis called Exploring the Depths of the New Sky and Atmosphere System. And it's on Unreal Engine's YouTube channel. So go ahead and check that out when you're done. To start off, let's of course add in a sun. And then I wanna to go to visual effects and add in a sky and atmosphere. And we notice there is no change right now. And that's because I actually have to go into the sun and tell Unreal that I want the sun affecting the sky and atmosphere. So under the advanced dropdowns, I wanna select atmospheric fog of sunlight and set that to true. Now, if I go into the atmosphere, we can see that it's already simulating by default Earth's atmosphere. And this is really physically accurate. It looks really nice. There's just one thing I wanna change and that is the ground radius. Right now, the ground radius is set to 6,360 kilometers and that's the actual radius of Earth itself. And we could use this 
but the math will be pretty tricky when we're trying to fit our sphere into our atmosphere. So I found a value of 1000 to make the math a lot easier to work with. We could keep this at its original value of 6360, but 1000 will just make our lives a little bit easier. Now we can finally bring in the spear and scale it. That's how it's as large as this atmosphere going on right now. And this is gonna be pretty crazy. So keep in mind that we're working in planetary scale. So all our numbers will be really big within the millions and billions. So for location, I want this to be centered directly in the middle of my atmosphere. And actually to better show what we are doing, I'm gonna to go to camera, bring this up to eight, and bring the camera speed scaler up to 128. That's how we are literally going as fast as we can in Unreal, and I'm gonna zoom out really far. So keep zooming out. And that is our atmosphere. So we want this sphere to be in the middle of our atmosphere. So what I will do is set X to zero, Y to zero, and Z to negative 100 billion. And now it's in the middle. So how I got negative 100 billion is some math. So Unreal uses centimeters and negative 100 billion centimeters is 1000 kilometers, which is again, the radius of our atmosphere. And that's also why we changed it from 6,360 to 1000, because that's how the math rounds out and makes it pretty easy. So when we made our mesh, and if you kept everything at default, our spear should be 50 centimeters in radius. So now we want its radius to be 1000 kilometers. So 50 centimeters times 2 million will give us 1000 kilometers. So if we go into scale and if I hit the lock icon, that's how it's scaling on all the axes. I'm just going to paste in 2 million and then hit go. And now our spear is correctly nested within our atmosphere. And that is pretty much it. That is the bulk of creating planets within Unreal Engine, which is crazy. Only in Unreal Engine can we get entire planetary atmospheres with just a couple of clicks. Before we move on, let's go set up our post process volume. So just drag in a post process, go down and make sure infinite extend unbound is set to true. And let's play with exposure. So go to exposure and set the compensation to 0.5 the min and max brightness, both to one. And that said, that's why we could just get a constant brightness throughout the entire scene, just to make it easier. And then we want to download some earth textures. So I found solar system scope to have the best earth texture. So just go through and make sure you download all the 8K textures. If you worry about memory, you could do 2K, but we're going to be pretty close to the surface. So I recommend using 8K textures and just import them into your project. Once you have everything downloaded, open up your specular map and uncheck sRGB. Since this is gonna be used as a mask, so hit save. And now let's create our earth texture. So go to material, let's call this M underscore earth. And open it up. Now I'm gonna go drag in all my textures, except the clouds. We're gonna be doing this a little bit different from the quick tutorial in that the clouds will be on a separate mesh. So let's begin by just hooking up base color, the normal map, and with the roughness, let's drag off from red, go to lerp, and make sure this is in the alpha, and let's set, add this to roughness, and let's set A to be one, and B to be 0 0.5. So that's how the land masses have complete roughness, and the waters have half roughness. So the waters are just a little bit reflective and hit apply. Let's drag our material onto earth and it is looking, it's looking okay right now. If I hold down control and L to rotate my camera around, we can see that we have one issue and that is we're not seeing any of the cities. And okay, what you just saw that really wacky, this little red line and green lines right here, this is actually the, if I zoom real, if I go back to my world origin point, this is actually this gizmo right here. So it's breaking apart because we're so far away from the world origin. So don't worry, this is just, we can see it breaking apart right now. That's just how it is because we're working in such large scales. But with that being said, let's go add in the city lights. Now I don't just want to drag 
my color into emissive color because if we actually open up our emissive map, we can see that it's not just the city colors, we also get a bunch of texturing all over the place. And this is exactly what we don't want because then our entire sphere will be illuminated. So to just isolate all the really bright spots, I can feed this through a simple power node. So like that. And if I right click and go to start preview node, we can see this is before it's bluish and start preview node on this one. This is after we've literally just isolated the cities. And with all that being said, let's drag this in emissive color and hit apply. And this is what the emissive map gives. And we can see that we're getting a bunch of nice city lights within the dark areas of our planet. But we're also getting some really bright spots even in the light part of our planet. And obviously this is physically inaccurate. So we want a way to just isolate the emissive map only within the shadow portion of our planet. And we could do this by using some wacky vector math. So first I'm going to get my light direction by typing sky atmosphere light direction. And this is giving me a vector and then want to dot this. So do a dot project with my vertex normals. And if you don't know what a vertex normal is, it's basically, actually, I think I could show it right now. So I'm just going to go into basic sphere, just quickly drag that in and open up where it is. And I could click on the normals to actually see the vertex normals. So these are literally just the direction that the vertex is pointing in. And this also tells us whether or not our sphere is pointing inwards or outwards. So if I go back into my material and I dot these two together, these should give me a mask of the shadows, but I have to inverse this since it's, I found that by default, it's going in the wrong direction if we do it this way. And then I'm going to go clamp it just in case, because it can be a value of over one, which will give us some weird results. And then I will multiply this on top of my emissive map. which will get rid of the lights within the bright areas of my planet and hit apply. Now back in my world, I'm going to go delete the spear we brought in real quickly for a demo purpose. And we can see that in the shadow areas of our planet, we can see our city lights. But if we go into the bright area, there's a slight fall off until we get really bright and we can barely see those city lights again. There's one issue in that we can still see them. And that's because the fall off of this transition is not strong enough. So we can increase the fall off by going into our material, adding in a power node. And I found a constant exponent of 20 to be good and then drag this into base and drag this out again into multiply. And let's go organize my nodes real quickly to make things look a lot nicer. Stop previewing this. And now if I hit apply, Okay, this is the exact effect I want. So in the light areas, we don't see any city lights. And then when we get to the shadow of our planet, we start to see all the nice city lights. So now we're getting a really nice sharp transition between the light and the shadow. And what is great is that this day and night cycle is completely dynamic. So if I hold down control L, I can rotate the sun around and the emissive map is changing depending on the sun's location which is just crazy how our material is updating in real time based on the direction of our sun. Beforehand, we weren't able to do this. You'd probably have to use some crazy blueprints or material parameters to be able to achieve this. But since the new sky and atmosphere was added in, we can get it automatically within our material using this node. Let's work on the clouds right now. So what I would do is I'm going to select my spear, hit control W to duplicate it, and I'm going to increase the size just a little bit. So within the scale, I'm going to change the second zero from a zero to a one. Now just increase it a bit. And now I want to make a cloud material. So M underscore clouds and open it up and drag in my cloud texture. So first thing I want to do is that I want to change the blend mode from opaque to translucent. And then I want to make sure two sided is checked on. That's how we can actually see what's going on from inside the sphere. So on the surface of the planet, and then I'm going to drag from RGB into opacity and let's have the emissive color be 
pure white. Back in the world, let's drag in our cloud material onto the larger sphere. And now we have clouds. So it's looking nice in the day areas, but when we get to night, our clouds are really bright. So I want to get rid of the clouds within the shadow areas, the night areas of the planet. And I could do that by just stealing these nodes we just created right here. So control C, let's go back into here. Let's control V these, add in a multiply and hook it up like this. So now our clouds should not be showing within the night areas. And yep, that's exactly what's happening. So right here, we get some nice looking clouds in the day. And then as nighttime slowly approaches, those clouds fade away and disappear. Okay, now our clouds are a little bit boring. So let's go and animate them just a bit. So that a slight animation that's what's rotating around my world. Hold down P, left click to add in a painter node and connect it to my UVs. Also add in a texture coordinate node, connect this to coordinates, and now I want a way to parameterize speed X. And we notice we don't have any inputs for speed X. That's because both speed X and speed Y are contained within speed. So this is actually a two vector. So I can drag from this and go to append vector. And now B is speed Y, A is speed X. So for B, I'm gonna keep that at zero. And for A, I'm going to right click, convert to parameter, call this speed X, set it to 0 0.001, which is a very slight rotation, and drag this into A like that. And then hit apply. Okay, so now if we go back into our world, we will notice that our clouds are slowly moving, and it just helps add a little bit more realism. But you also notice that we don't see our land right now. And that's because from certain angles, especially when the sun is at a low angle, we can't see our landmass. So I want to raise the sun up just a bit. And now we can see our land masses again. And our world is looking really nice right now, except for this glitching widget. Okay, let's add in some stars. We can do that by going into planet animation and going into SM underscore star spear and just dragging this out. And then I'm going to go zero this out like that. And I'm going to make this something ridiculously large, like one, zero, 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 zero. Zero, zero. And now we have stars in our world. And this is a very simple material. If I just open it up, we can see that I have a simple star texture that I made in Substance Designer. And it is tiling 10 times. And I just decreased the brightness a bit. So 0 0.25 since I found it was too bright by default. And then I added a sky atmosphere light disc luminance to my color like this. And what this does is that it allows me to still have the sun right here. So if I didn't do this, then our sun would disappear. Now it's on to the fun part, and that is actually creating the surface of our planet. But before we can do that, we have to download some free assets. So all these assets are free on the marketplace forever. So you can download them and follow along. I'm going to be using landscape backgrounds. And I'm also going to be using temperate vegetation optimized grass library. So download both of those. And you don't have to use this grass library. You can also use mega scans, but I found the look of this to look really nice. Okay, so I have everything downloaded right now. And first, before I even make the landscape, I want to add in the background meshes because they'll just do a much nicer job at blending in our landscape with the actual surface. So to do so, I'm going to go into Photo real backgrounds, maps, go into overview map. And I want to copy and paste some of these meshes. So I'm going to select all of these right here. And select some right here. So again, you can select multiple while holding down the shift key. And hit control C. Go back into my main map. And hit control V. So now if I hit F to snap to where they are, we can see that they're slightly below the ground. I'm just gonna lift it up a bit. There we go. So with all these selected, I'm gonna go scale all of them up by 12. Actually, no, I'll scale them up by five at first. Like that, so I'm gonna zoom out. They're a lot bigger. And then I'm gonna only select, not the mountain ones, but the ones that have E in them, these. And I'm just going to move them off to the side a bit right there. And then I'm going to scale these up by 12. 
just like that. And now I'm going to go scatter these mounted meshes all around this area right here. And now that I have them all neatly scattered around where the actual landscape is going to be, which is that little square area right there, I'm going to go bring this back. That's how it's closer to the origin point, which is around here. Just like that. And then I'll also bring up everything just a little bit up above. Like this. Okay, we have one glaring issue right now, and that is our landscape is literally in the middle of the North Pole. And... I don't know, maybe you want a landscape in the middle of the North Pole, but for me, I'm going to go rotate the Earth a bit and find a location. That's how the color of that landscape will blend in better with the actual surface of our planet. So I'm just going to rotate this down and try to find a nice looking location. So like this. And where is it? Okay, there it is. maybe put in Louisiana or we don't have to do in the US I'm actually gonna go rotate this around and let's find another spot so let's make this in the Alps like this or near the Alps right there so right now our landscape isn't really blending well with the earth there's a very noticeable sharp transition between our mesh and the actual earth mesh and one way we can fix this is to actually go through and add an opacity to this entire landscape area so the further we are away from the middle here the less we'll see of the landscape so i have up an example so something like this where you can see that in the middle here we have full opacity and slowly when we go away from the landscape we get less opacity now this is going to get a little bit tricky so first, I'm going to build out this function on a small scale, and then we're going to apply it to a large planetary scale later. So I have a very simple scene right now, and I'm going to go create the function that will be applied to everything once we're done. Now, keep in mind, if you're following along, you do not have to follow along at this point since I already made the function. This is just to explain what exactly is happening. So if I go into this function, I want to have it be masked. I want to be able to use this opacity mask. So to do so, I want to make sure that under blend mode, masked is selected. Now I'm going to grab this fade text and plug it into opacity mask and hit apply. So we are not getting what is expected right now. We can see that it's literally just a circle and there's a sharp fall off. So we don't see it slowly fading into nothingness, just like what we expect from the actual texture we are using right now. And that is because by default, when you have a material domain of surface, unreal functions with basically an on and off switch. So it's either the materials being rendered or it's not being rendered. There is no in between, but we can fake this using the classic temporal, dither temporal anti-aliasing. So if I plug this in alpha threshold and plug this into result and hit apply, and now we're actually getting a nice fade slowly from 100% opacity to no opacity and this is actually faking the fade right now so it still has an on and off switch but if we zoom in real close yeah you probably can't see it but it's actual pixels so it's selectively rendering some pixels and slowly rendering no pixels okay so now that we have this there there's one issue and that is this isn't really independent so if i hold down alt and drag out we get another circle and that's what i don't want I want one circle, one fade to affect both static meshes. And we can do this by using the absolute world position. So basically I'm taking absolute world position. I'm grabbing an R and G and I'm multiplying this by a fade size to control the actual size of this circle. And I'm going to plug it into UVs, hit apply. And now we can see that both of these meshes are actually sharing the same circles. And if I zoom in here, we can see a little bit of glitching. That's called Z fighting. So if I move the mesh just a bit. Yeah, that Z fighting will go away. But we can see that they're all sharing the same texture position. 
but that's because it's actually using the world as its texture position. Now, I don't want the spears kind of spawning like this where they're off to the sides. I actually want to move the spear. That's how it starts from the middle, so from the origin point. And if I select this mesh right here, we can see that it's zeroed out to the origin point. So I want the spear to start off at zero, zero within the middle. And right now, by default, it's actually starting off from one of the corners of this texture. So to actually move the spear down, that's how the origin point is at the center of our texture. I will use a 0 0.5 and append that to make a two vector and then add that on top of the multiply and plug that into the UVs. So now if I hit apply, our texture should be centered. Okay, nice. Now we actually do see a spear that's starting off at the origin point. And even if I move this mesh around, we can see that the spear will always start off from the origin point and from the center of our texture. Last feature I wanna add is the ability for our meshes to fade away the farther we are. So if we're far away, we won't see those meshes anymore. And that'll just be a really good way to blend it in more with the planet. That's how when we're far away and when we're witnessing the planet, we don't see the landscape at all. But when we're close up, we do see the landscape. And we can do that with a distance blend. So if we take a distance blend, invert it, and multiply it with the output of our texture into alpha threshold. And basically, start offset is where the blend starts, and blend range is how large that range will be. If I hit apply. Okay, now that the material has been compiled, up close, there is no change. But if I go far away, they disappear. So up close, they're here. And if I go far away, they slowly disappear. And that is exactly what we want. Keep in mind, there's just this one way you could have achieved these features in Unreal. There's literally a billion different ways you could have achieved the same effect. I even discovered a way where we don't have to use a texture, but that would have caused a, just a lot more hassle than it was worth. So we left it as texture for now. But if you go into the assets you could download right now, I've already included all of that in a function called MF underscore landscape fade. And if we go into it, it's literally the exact same thing we just made, except we are using material parameter collection right here. And that's so we can control everything universally within here. So we don't have to go through each individual instance and change the parameters when we make a change. Finally, now that all of that technical stuff is out of the way, let's actually add the MF underscore landscape fade to our landscape background meshes. And keep in mind, this will only work if the middle here is at the world's origin point. And we can tell if it's at the world's origin point by dragging in a static mesh and zeroing it out. And yeah, that looks like it is at the world origin point. If it's not, make sure you move everything so that's how it is. So to actually apply it to the landscape, I'm gonna go find where my function is, which is, and then I'm just gonna select one of the materials, open it up. And now within this material, I'm gonna go drag in MF underscore landscape fade, plug this into opacity mask and activate that input by changing blend mode to masked and hit apply. And we can see the fade is working right now. So I'm gonna go through the rest of the materials. And there we have it. We have a nice looking fade going on right now. And if we zoom out, I don't know if you can see it, but it slowly fades away until it's non-existent when it's all the way up here. Then if we go back in, it fades back in. Now, what I think I'll do right now is just copy around some more mountain ranges just to give it some more variation outwards and a little bit more fade. And that's pretty much it. So now we have the landscape and it is blending really well right now with the actual earth. So keep in mind, if you don't like the way it's fading right now, if you wanna make this fade smaller or larger, you can literally change everything by using this material parameter collection. And since 
we made our function using material parameter collection, it will affect everything so we don't have to go through each individual material and change it there, just saving us a lot of time. Also, I just noticed an issue and that is with the clouds right here, if I zoom in, we can see that at a certain point we start to intersect with the clouds and this can look really weird. So I'm just gonna add a very, very slight fade to the clouds. That's how when I'm close up to the clouds, the clouds disappear. So we'll just do that with the distance fade again with a multiply like that. And I notice for the blend rage with the clouds, 1 million is good and at negative 100,000 for the start offset is also good. So now if I hit apply, we can see that when I go into the clouds, they disappear. And then when I go back away, the clouds reappear. So disappear, reappear. And that's just going to make the transition a lot nicer once we start animating a camera. So now that all that is out of the way, let's go over the fun stuff. And that is creating the landscape and animating our camera with a sequencer. Okay, so now let's add in our landscape. I'm going to go to modes, landscape, keep everything at default, except change sections per component to two by two and hit create. Now I'm going to leave landscape mode and select my landscape and try to bring it in like this and now scale it down. Just so that it's barely fitting that hole like that and try to Now I will apply a material to this. So under planet animation, go to landscape material, and then we have a landscape material. And if you're wondering how to make this, I have an entire tutorial series going over how we can create literally this exact same landscape. So go check that out. If you don't want to check it out, you could just use this landscape, but keep in mind for your landscape version, these texture slots will be empty. So go ahead and fill those in with some good mega scan textures. Also, there is one difference between this material and the one we made in that tutorial series in that I just added one gravel texture just to help blend it in with the actual gravel of our background landscape. So I'm gonna go apply that now to my landscape, the material instance of that, go in a foliage paint and let's go add in an auto Space shared assets, that's fine. And a gravel. Now, before we go in and start sculpting the landscape, let's brighten the shadows here by using a skylight. So just drag it in, and now our shadows look a lot more realistic. We can actually see what's happening in there, but we just have one issue. So the way the skylight works is that it just samples its location and projects that location onto all the meshes, and this includes our planet and that just looked gross. The entire dark side is right now illuminated and this is completely inaccurate to what a planet would actually look like. Now, if we're talking about a moon, let's say orbiting Jupiter, then this side can actually be illuminated since there's bounce light from Jupiter onto the moon. But in this case, Earth is literally just a planet by itself. So this entire place should be pitch black. Now, there is a way to fix this, but I was only able to find a way by going through C++ and we're not going to do that in this tutorial. So instead what I would do is animate this skylight property right here. So when the camera is far away, I will just manually set it to zero. And when it's on the surface, I will set it to one. And if you don't know, we can animate any object and any properties within the details panel, which is really cool. We could just keyframe that. So I'm just gonna fly back in there and I'm also gonna add in an exponential height fog. So come here, exponential, and drag it in like that and bring it down because that's way too intense. And that is also right now breaking our planet. You can see this looks really weird, but we will again turn it off when we're zooming out, but and turn it on when we're up close like this. Now it is time to sculpt our landscapes. Now I could go into landscape mode sculpt and just manually go in here and try to sculpt realistic formations but that's going to be really hard and time consuming so i included within the downloadable content and alpha brushes so this texture comes with three different texture stamps so if i go change circle to alpha drag this into the texture 
bring this up, not even 8192, let's do 40192. Check use clay brush, uncheck auto rotate and bring your strength up to one. All you have to do is left click and we immediately get some nice realistic formations. And we can select the different alpha brushes by going on our texture channel and choosing green or blue. So I can choose green, stamp there, blue, stamp there. So just go through and start stamping randomly to get a nice looking landscape. Okay, so now I think the landscape looks nice. Again, this is some very subtle sculpting. I don't want anything too intense since the main focus will be on our character, the grass, and the actual planet itself, not the landscaping done. Before we move on to foliage, let's actually blend this landscape better with a surrounding area with gravel, and then we're gonna go in and just paint a little bit of foliage and then start animating. So I'm gonna go back into my landscape mode Go to sculpt, no paint, gravel, and then just go in here with a brush and try to have these gravel trails, these scree, slowly spill into my actual landscape. And yeah, I'd say we're done with that part now. Keep in mind, this looks really bad, but at the rate the camera will be going, it will only be on screen for maybe 15 or 20 frames. So it can be bad. It just, we want to be able to visually see a nice transition when we're up in the sky. So let's go add in some foliage right now. And I'm gonna go into foliage mode. And I already have a little bit of foliage loaded up right here. To load up the foliage, you wanna go into PN underscore grass library, go into foliage types, grass foliage, control A everything, and then drag it into this location. So I'm just gonna select maybe the first 20 or so grasses and activate them by clicking on this little checkbox. I can see everything is activated right now and I don't want that. So I'm gonna control A, select everything, unactivate them, and hold down shift, select the first one, go down, let's go select this one. So this is a good amount. And let's go paint some grass, but only in the areas where I know my camera will see it. That's so we can save on memory and space. So right here is where I plan on my camera being. So I'm going to go in and just paint in a lot of grass. Okay. Yeah. Just like that. This is looking nice. I'm also going to paint in a little bit of grass around this area because right now I mean, this is obviously just a circle of grass. It'd be weird if grass naturally grew like that. So we'll go in and change my density from one to 0 0.25. And then just add in some grass around here like this. Okay, everything is looking nice right now. And I think we are ready to go through and start animating this with the sequencer. So to add a sequencer, you want to go into your content browser, find an area, right click, and let's go to animation, then to level sequencer. And let's call this main anim and drag this into my world. Now we have a little sequencer right there. So I'm going to click on open level sequence and we have a timeline. This is where we're going to be doing all of our animating. So let's go spawn in a camera right now by clicking on this camera icon. Now we're automatically piloting a new camera that we can adjust like this. And I feel like the focal length is a little bit off right now. So I'm going to go into focal length and play around with it a bit. Let's make this a wide focal length, like yeah, 16 and set it like this. So this is good right now. So to stop piloting it, I'm going to hit on this arrow icon on the top left. So now we can see we have a camera right there. And let's go add in an actor or a mannequin 
that will be waving at us. So I've already included a mannequin within my plan animations. Mannequin, character, mesh, and just drag in SK underscore mannequin and have him turn around like this. So let's see if he's actually showing up in our camera. And it looks like he is. We can also pin this camera to the bottom right hand corner of our viewport by clicking on the small pin preview. That's how we can always see this camera no matter what we are doing within our viewport. So you could just be like that. Looking at the camera. Now is the fun part and the bulk of our animation and that is animating our camera starting from the surface then going all the way out into space. And yes, I know our cloud texture is a bit wonky right now. We will fix that in a bit, but first let's animate since I know everyone's excited to do that. Now we're gonna animate this using keyframes. If you ever use Blender or any other motion graphics software like After Effects, then you know exactly what a keyframe is. If you don't, there's really no way to explain it except to show you. So with this camera, I'm going to go to frame zero zero. If it's not frame zero zero, you could just drag it into it like that and hit transform. Hit this plus icon right here. So this will set a keyframe there. Now I want my camera to wait a bit. That's what we can actually give our mannequin time to wave and say goodbye to us. So let's if I hit space, we can actually play the sequencer. And I think right there is enough time. So I'm going to hit the plus icon again to add in a new keyframe. Now we're gonna start animating it. So these two keyframes are just telling the camera to stay still. So if I go all the way over here, I can move my camera up. Actually, I can pilot my camera by clicking on the camera icon right next to Sin Camera Actor. And I could just move up a bit like that and hit on this plus icon. So now when I move the sequencer back, you can see it's animating now. So if I start from zero, zero, I can press play. My character will wave a bit and then the camera starts to move up and then it's going to shoot up. So that's what a keyframe does. It basically just tells Unreal where an object should be at a certain time. And then it interpolates, animates in between those two positions. Now that we have the first part of our camera animation done, let's actually move the camera out. So I'm going to hold down control and use my scroll wheel to just make the sequencer smaller and then I'm gonna make it larger by moving this red line out like that. And moving my camera cut, my clip out like that. So now I'm gonna hit my camera icon again to make sure that I'm piloting it. And let's go all the way out to here. So towards the end and let's zoom out. So I'm gonna make my camera speed eight again and zoom all the way out like that. And I'm gonna hit on the transform plus icon again to add in a keyframe. So now we can see that we start off like that and we go there. So if we press play, waves a bit, moves up, and then it should shoot up just like that. And we're gonna animate away the exponential height fog and the skylight. Okay, so right now I think I'm going to animate the camera to make it a little bit snappier because when it comes to this right here, it's a bit too slow and it just speeds up like that. So let's make this a little bit faster by moving the keyframes. Let me actually zoom in using control and left mouse button to pan within the sequencer and I can move this down like that just to make it faster. So now if I hit play, it goes up faster and it shoots up like this. So this is looking nice. Go into the mannequin. And if I come up to add track, add actor to sequencer, if I search for the mannequin, bring that in. Now I can select an animation for this. I'm gonna go select UE4 mannequin skeleton wave. So now I can just position this in a way. So now, He's waving at us and we shoot up. So that was pretty cool. And now let's go get rid of this exponential fog. That's how we don't get 
this looking weird thing right here and our skylight. So I'm gonna come back here, go to add track and let's start with a skylight like this. We're gonna have to add another track and go to skylight component, add another one again and we're gonna go to intensity, set that at one to begin with. We move forward a bit and right there when the camera starts moving up like that, right there. Let's hit one again. And then when it goes up like this, let's change this to zero and set a keyframe there. So what is happening is that it's one right here and then we can slowly start to see the one decrease and it keeps decreasing until we hit zero. So it's like a transition. And now if we go all the way out, we get the nice darkness again. So let's do the exact same thing we just did with the skylight to the exponential height fog. So I'm gonna track, actor class, let's find the height fog, add it in, add another track with it, height fog component, and let's go add in fog density. So set this to 0.002 at the beginning and go to the same location as the transition. Actually a bit more out, like right there, maybe. So it's 0 0.02. And then right here, we will set this to zero and make another keyframe. So now we don't have that issue anymore and it's just a smooth transition. So he waves, we start to go up a bit and then we just shoot up and we are in space. So now if we go all the way back here at the beginning, we hit space bar to play. He waves a bit, we slowly start to go up and then we zoom out from the surface all the way into space. Last thing we need to do is fix the clouds because if we go all the way in there, Actually, right now our clouds are looking really good, but sometimes we could get glitches and we can also see the pixels since our cloud is so large and we're only using an AK texture to encompass this entire planet. So one way we can fix this, if we go content browser, go back to where my cloud is. In my assets, clouds, we can tile this over and over again. Now I don't wanna use this one, so I'm gonna create a new one, control W, clouds surface go into this one and let's tile this five times to give our clouds more density and let's change the speed from 0 0.001 to 0 0.0025 just to decrease the speed just a little bit and then hit apply now i'm going to select the cloud sphere Go back into my sequencer, add it to the track, actor sequencer, and right there, add Spear 2. Add a track, add a static mesh component, add another track, and now we're going to add a material element zero switcher. So we can actually animate what materials we are using. So to start off with, I want to use the cloud surface. So we're starting off with that and we will fix that in a bit. And then when we look right at the ground, we will have it switch from cloud surface. So first I'm gonna do a keyframe right there to indicate that we are using cloud surface at that moment. And then over in the next frame or the next two frames, I'm gonna switch this over to M underscore clouds and hit a keyframe there. So now we're going back to our original clouds. So it goes surface clouds, it goes back to our original clouds and our surface clouds are moving a little bit too slow. So I'm going to go back into them. And let's just delete that zero. And finally, the last step to fixing our clouds is to actually rotate the entire cloud sphere to get rid of this UV stretching at the poles of our sphere. So I'm going to zoom out like this 
and rotate it. That's how it's not right above my landscape. And also rotate this a bit like this. That's how the clouds are going in the direction of the horizon. So now if I snap back to the surface and we move up right here, we can see that we have some really nice high density clouds and they're moving at a fairly realistic speed. And then if I go to sequencer, move up a bit, we can see we get our original clouds. They do not look good on the surface, but if we zoom out, they look great in space. So I originally planned on not going over this, but I think it's pretty important. And that is how to implement this from planet surface into space as a gameplay feature, kind of like Battlefront 3 or No Man's Sky. So first off, if I press play, we can see I have a little spaceship that I stole from the Unreal Engine content examples. And if I press space, he goes up pretty fast, but then he just dies. He gets killed and he's removed from the world outliner. So if we actually go into our logs by going to window, developer tools, output log, we can see that there's warning. Um, our spaceship's name is outside the world bounds. So this tells me that under world settings in world, I need to go in advanced options and uncheck enable world bounds check. Because by default with unreal levels, sometimes the object will be destroyed if it goes too far away from the world origin point. So now if I press play, move up pretty quickly. And yeah, I can keep on going up and up and up. But now we have the problem of the exponential height fog and the skylight still activating. So before that, we used the animation, the sequencer to actually shut down those, but that won't really work for gameplay. So instead, we're actually going to have to use the blueprint levels. So if I go to blueprints, I can open up the level blueprint and I already have set up some math right now. So first off, I'm getting a reference to the player, AKA the spaceship, and I'm getting its location, the Z axis, and then I'm getting a reference of our landscape and getting the Z axis location. So this will basically just give me how far away our spaceship is from our landscape. And if you're confused on how to get references to an object within the level blueprint, all you have to do is, okay, if I can just fly back here, click on any object, and then within level blueprint, if I left click, we can see we create a reference to that object. So that's how I got the landscape. Then I feed this through a distance blend. And if you're wondering how I got this, I literally just went into Unreal's distance blend nodes within the materials. And then I transfer that over to blueprint nodes. And then I'm going to set the fog max opacity and set the intensity. And then I have a lerp that basically just it's essentially like a one minus X. So it's inverting everything before I put in there. So the farther we are away from our landscape, then the less we'll see our fog and our skylight. Also for values, I did negative 100 here. So it's going to start fading at negative 100 and negative 100 a thousand for the rest. So if I hook this up like this, hit compile, go back to my role, press play. Now, we can see that our fog is still here and our skylight is activated. If I fly up, everything disappears. And now if I could even go into the shadow area of my world. Yeah, this is pretty glitchy because the ship isn't meant to fly this fast, but we can see that our skylight isn't ruining our world right here. So it's still looking nice and like an actual shadow. So that's how we would implement this as a gameplay feature. Also, I need to point out that performance isn't a concern for me right now, so I'll just use the event tick, but this will actually cost a lot going on right now because this runs on every frame. So on every single frame, all this math is being activated and all these functions are being called. And while it's fine for this case, if we're talking about a high performance video game, I wouldn't do it this way. Instead, I would set it up with maybe a collision box that would activate all of this logic. So. Just for now, just for test purposes, I think event tick is fine if you're not caring about performance. And that concludes this tutorial. So in this tutorial, we literally made a planet and then we put a surface on that planet. And if I press the space bar, we can see there is a transition between the two.
So I highly encourage you to not just make Earth, since quite frankly, Earth can be a little boring. Actually create your own fictional sci-fi or fantasy worlds, because with Unreal, the possibilities are endless. Also make sure you share your creations with the community down below by exporting this animation. You can do that real quickly by clicking on the export button right here and choosing a location and maybe changing your resolution to 1080 or even higher. Now, with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you like and subscribe and also check out my other videos. So I would say, all I have to say now is goodbye.